Hey, I'm Luca Guadagnino. I'm the director of Call Me By Your Name. And I'm Timothy Chalamet, one of the stars of the film. Thank you for joining our Facebook Live today. We're here. There are people from all over the world watching, and we're excited to answer some of your questions about the movie, which you can check out in theaters now. I Don't, would say all over the world. All actually. over the world, actually. Don't know why Army Hammer's not here today. For some reason, he got the day off. And, I think uh, he's in New York. Oh, yeah, he, that is a legitimate thing. We're in L.A. He is in New York, so that is a legitimate excuse. So I'm sure he's watching. Not. Hey, uh, before we start, here's a special clip from the film. Call Me By Your Name, nominated for four Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Is there anything you don't know? Best Actor. You only knew how little I know about the things that matter. Best Adapted Screenplay. You're saying what I think you're saying? And Best Song. I shouldn't have said anything. Just pretend you never did. Nature has cunning ways of finding our weakest spot. Call Me By Your Name, rated R. Now playing only in theaters. So Claire C. is asking me, the poster on Elliot's bedroom wall shows a lot of personality references to Peter Gabriel, sports racing, professional tennis. How did you decide what to put on this wall, especially since there is no references to Elliot's thesis in the book? I think that's part of the global work of my team and my production designer, my, my set decorator, also the costume designer, Julia Piersanti. We didn't want to have Elio, who is in, this, in the book described like this very bright, intelligent, elevated boy who plays piano and goes into the world of academia. We didn't want him to feel like, like a sort of like old-fashioned, dusty boy. We want him to be very alive and kicking the way you are. <laughs> so, you know, like we thought... Yes, he's into the classical music. Yes, he loves uh, the, 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 the ancient world and the classical world, but, but yet he's a boy of his contemporarity. That's why we started to think of where he goes with his parents when they go holidaying. They go to maybe some um, places like Venezia where there is the Biennale and they collect posters of the exhibitions. He may have bumped into the work of uh, Robert Mapplethorpe, or he's curious of music that is, goes beyond the canon of the classical music. And that's how we went into that. And that's how, for instance, he wears this T-shirt for uh, the talking heads. There is another question for you. From Damon B. What's your favorite movie you watch during your movie nights with Luca during the filming in Crema? Um, I don't know. The non-sophisticated part of me wants to say Alien because it's a movie I hadn't seen before. And watching it, I thought, I've seen that in a movie before. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. I've seen that. And realizing Alien didn't steal from all the movies I'd seen, but realizing the movies I'd seen have been stealing from Alien <laughs> for 40 to 50 years. And then another one was Body Double, which is a movie that was like I had to be educated on because it's not like it's a, it's a, Brian it's a strange Palmer. movie. Brian De Palma's and it's, Body yeah. Double. Yeah. And it's strange. And, uh, and then I showed you Babette's Feast. <laughs> Babette's Feast. And you feast. fall asleep. <laughs> yes. He hated it. I loved that movie. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right. We have a question for both from Rachel W. In the last scene, what is scripted for? Was it scripted for Timothée to look into the camera? I think he wasn't. I think you did. Yeah. And I was so happy. Yeah, and uh, there's a yeah there's a moment at the end of Boyhood that's uh, like that moment at the end of Call Me by Your Name, where uh, the protagonist looks into the camera right before the end of the movie. Yeah, you. Aliza F asks both if you are a. Cat people or dog people? <coughs> I know the answer for me. What is your answer? Um, uh, I, I both, both, but for maybe you more a dog. Are person. you saying both because you don't want to upset? No, the honestly, dog? honestly, it's the clear answer for me is dog. But then I've had really great experiences with cats in the last two years. I'm my, my buddy Julian, you know Julian. I know Julian. He's lovely. And you met the cat at that apartment. I love the cat. Taco. I'm a cat person. And if shuts out Taco, Julian's so cat. cat and dog. <laughs> Yes, cat and dog. Yeah. Maria M. is asking us, do you guys keep or take anything from set after wrapping? I think anything? I brought some things on the movie that came from my house, so I brought it back to the house. <laughs> or, did, or you didn't get it back. Yes. Um, I, there, nothing from the movie, but I had a red hoodie that I wore on set. I took that with me. Nice. Jessica is asking, Jessica S. is asking both. Do either of you have uh, your own version of Billowy, a souvenir from somebody in the, your past that helps you feel close to them? Who? that's a really great question. That's a great Do question. Do you? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I said it's a great question because that's so relatable because there are things that, I don't know, I guess everybody has. It smells like a certain person. Yeah, that's true. 
I do too. Nice. <laughs> Trisha S is nice, asking nice. both. To me, one of the most beautiful aspects of the film is that we get to see these two men fall in love without any outside tension of our adversity. Thank you. Such as a hateful, disapproving parents or friends, we just get to see them organically and beautifully fall in love. What do you think is the importance of telling a story like this, especially in today's world? Well, we can say the time is up for equality and for a full, complete expression of the people the inside of persons and empowerment. I think that we want to tell a story in which Elliot Oliver and even the rest of the people in the movie empowers one another instead of downsize one another. So it's, it's very important. And as Army would say, love is love is love. And here's a story that doesn't define love and sexuality in the stringent Western definitions that we're used to. And it's just about two guys, two people falling in love. Yeah. Gabriella M, for you, Monsieur Chalamet. <laughs> yes, thank you, Gabriella, for the Monsieur Chalamet. Has somebody approached you to do the audio version of the novel in French? It would be totally cool if you do it, since Army Hammer did the English version. I would definitely listen to you reading it. N I have not been approached about doing the audio version of this in French, although I think that's a great idea. I'd be open for it. And actually, you know, this film was dubbed in French. And Esther did Gahed, you dub yourself? Esther Gahed dubbed herself in French, who plays Marcia, as did Victor Dubois, who plays Chiara. And I saw a picture of the guy that took my voice, and I'm honored that somebody would do it, but it, it is not me. Why you know? didn't I ask you? You should have done it. I don't know. Okay, this was the reason I was given. This was, this was Esther's guess, is that... No much time for you? No, because that the act, my accent isn't perfect in French, so it would be weird to have this kid from Italy having an American accent when all the other characters speak perfect French. So I'm not sure it's a good choice. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My biggest champion, Luca. Man. Mariana A. is asking me to Maestro Guadagnino. No, wait, maestro. I want to read it. Yeah, you read it. My question... Oop. There no, we no. go. Wait, wait. Here it is. My yeah. question to Maestro... Yeah. My question to Maestro Guadagnino. Classical music plays such a big role in Elio's life. It is also brilliantly integrated in the movie. Who are your favorite composers? And if you wanted to make someone fall in love with classical music... What would be the piece you'd recommend? P.S. Many thanks for this beautiful movie. Much love from Aus Austria, Armenia. Hey, Austria. Hey, Armenia. Uh, well, I mean, I, I think the, the music we play in the movie is a nice sample of what I love, me and my editor, Walter Fasano. We have Sakamoto, for instance, which is a wonderful composer. We use the Debussy Ravel. I think the good introduction to classical music could be to go through the 10 symphonies that Gustav Mahler composed and to start from the first and listen to all of them, that's a very good immersive way to go into that kind of world. And I'm sure that whoever tar starts from there is going to have a long relationship with classical music. That's all right. From Kevin G for either. I am very curious to know if there were certain scenes in the movie that ended up getting cut that you wished were still in the final version. If so, what was the scene? Luca, do you have any plans to give us an extended version of the movie slash director's cut? I start with the end. I think the movie we made is the movie we made. Yeah. And I'm happy with the movie. And, you know, in the process of making a film... Although, Luca, I've heard you say in the past that the scenes that were on the cutting floor of this movie could possibly be... In, in the sequels. In another version of in this. A, yeah, that's for sure. I think in the, in the, in the Blu-ray, we're going to include a, a lovely scene in which your parents in the movie have a lot little moment of uh, smooshiness and uh, <laughs> we'll, you'll see that but other ones we're going to keep for the I want to see stories. the production design of that room in the movie because I saw it on the day and it feels like we need a more another Luca Guadagnino designed room for the <laughs> movie I'm serious we need uh, more Amira and Michael we need more Amira and Michael too and also that scene correct me if I'm wrong is the windows are open and they are they, they hear you. you so it was a lovely moment in which the father and mother become entangled in an intimate moment because they are, in a way, uh, inspired by the sound of the voices of Elliot and Oliver loving each other downstairs. Michael Stuhlbarg, Father of the Year 2018. Oh, here we go. That's it. All now right. we are live. And now these are live live. Okay. I'm going to put this down. Um, <clears throat> Liz Orwell. How long did it take for you to learn piano from Vince Gutierrez I play the piano from 7 to 12 years old and then you know to the degree that Elio can play in the book I could not play he 
is and was more skilled than I am. So Luca had me set up with a, an Italian teacher named Roberto Solci for a month and a half in Cuomo before we started to shoot. I have a question for you. Okay. Travis James Birch is asking, filming in Italy, there must be some really good pizza. I assume, what is it, are your favorite pizza toppings? Okay, I'm really a simple, simple pizza guy, and uh, I usually go plain or with a cheese, you know, just a plain cheese pizza. If I have to add a topping, maybe sausage. I'm not going to wade into the pineapple debate. No. <laughs> Holly Burke Hessler is asking me favorite books, authors, and on musicians. Also, where can I buy Mr. Chalamet's lamp sweater? Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> what is it? Gucci? Go at Gucci and buy at Gucci. My favorite books? I don't know. I would say, <laughs> I would say the Hitchcock Truffaut book. It's a good book to, to advise. We, we spoke about music before. Uh, for Luca. Uh, from Lisa Fussell. How much fun was the dance party in Kramer? I loved it. It was great. Luca, it great? Luca, Luca. It was fantastic. That was great. Timmy, where do you get these amazing sweaters? Eloisa, Helanker, uh, Ikeda. Listen, wherever I can get them. Who, 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 whoever. This is from Gucci. Yes. But I, I have to say that Timothy has an amazing taste. He knows. He knows. <laughs> it says. Very good. says them. You know, I Am Love was nominated for an Academy Award in costume design, right? Yeah. Did you go to the ceremony? Did you go to the Oscar luncheon four years or six years ago? Or not for the not to the luncheon because uh, I wasn't nominated. I went Did the to the costume design. I ago? wanted to. Yeah, I went to the. Yesterday we had the luncheon nominees. The luncheon was and, cool. And let me say, I, I don't. I, I guess it's not being brought up, and yet I it, I feel it somewhat crucial to say that was one of the most moving experiences, and seeing, like just hearing Luca's name get called out again. Everybody goes up there with a deer in headlights feeling of sorts. Yeah, and. I was happy to be already on those risers when other producers, Marco and Peter, got announced. It was like such a weird groundswell of pride. It was, fantastic. It was like ultimate prom night. Paige Cotton, is, Paige Cotton is asking you, what's your favorite memory on set? My favorite memory on set, I don't know, it's the collage feeling of it all. It's the fact that we would work six days a week, but eight hours a day. So we were always kind of doing the movie, but always also just hanging out and getting immersed in this in this town in a way that I don't know. I don't know if I'm ever going to have a movie experience like this again. Maybe in the sequel. Catherine Cloutier, she said that we are amazing. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. I, I like, yeah, much love to you. Like you pick good ones, Luca. You pick good ones. Well. I like that. <laughs> um. um Let's see. Uh, from Romina Romani, how did you guys spend your free time in Italy when not filming? I was in the editing room, and you were in That's the true. editing room. Yeah, that was like a rare gift to this movie, and maybe not something that would be good on every movie, but something that helped a lot is Luca and the editor, Walter Frizzano, would let Army and I come into the editing room and see how the movie was progressing, and because we shot in chronological order, there were, that, there were a lot of clues in that. And... Uh, and we could see how the performances were evolving. G. Jung No is asking me a question. I wanted to ask if Elio not being able to differentiate the voice of Marcia, I think you mean the voice of Mafalda or Mum, right away, but recognizing Oliver's voice right away was intentional. Yeah, I think it is, right? Hmm. He's, hmm. He, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when Derek you... Lastoviska is asking you and I what's your favorite lines in the film? Timothy and Luca, any favorite lines from the film? Uh, um, I like when you say truce, tregua. Yeah, and that was found on the day. Yeah. Uh, that, that was terrifying because all the other Italian lines, I was trying to memorize phonetically. It's difficult when you don't speak the language, but I was trying to months, weeks in advance. And that day I remember you were like, just say it, tregua, tregua. I was like, well, I don't know what this sounds. Tregua. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, for Luca. Oh, no, you're there. Yeah, I said. Um, uh, I think we went through all the questions. Page, More questions, guys. Paige Catton, what was your favorite memory on set? We we discussed. Oh that. yeah, we did. I'm, my apologies. Uh, what's your favorite song from the soundtrack? Oh, Brenda Martinez Lopez. What's your favorite song in the soundtrack? Um, Apart from Sufjan Stevens' masterpieces, of lady, course. Lady, lady, lady. Lady, lady, lady from um, Flashdance. Have you seen Flashdance? No, eventually? I know. You, you should told see me, it. It's a great movie it. from from Adrian Lyne. Have to watch it. It's yeah. a beautiful film. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Yeah, I like that song very much. Jocelyn Ruiz is 
after telling us that she loves us both. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Mariana Hidalgo is asking if you have anything in common with Elio. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I hope uh, an openness to, to life, to the universe. Uh, are, are we, yeah, is that a signal? Um, and um, I don't know, a, a yearning for deep experiences, hopefully. And that's another question for you from Matt Nungien. Hey, Timbo, that never heard about. Timbo, that's nice. What's your favorite part of your of, of, about making movies? That my favorite part about making movies is, uh, I don't know, it's that feeling of flow. It's that feeling of like on the third week or the fourth week where you're really in the rhythm and you're, you're reading and reacting in scenes without even really feeling excited about it afterwards. You're in such a rhythm and that's exciting. And like, and like, especially at a young age, feeling like, I don't know, you're working with like really established artists and brilliant minds, so. Well, you're young, but you have a lot of experience before Thank doing you. this movie. But as, but as you said, naivete abound. It's good. Okay. I mean, you don't want to be like a cynical guy who, oh, I've seen everything. No, I not at all. That's, yeah. That's the beauty of it. Stephen Custer is asking me, you often talk about how you ac your actors must surrender to the camera. How do you accomplish that trust and relationship? Slashing them. <laughs> 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 no, I don't do that. Uh, Zoe Danielson, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is, um, there's, it's tied. It's The Dark Knight, it's Punch Drunk Love, and it's James White. James White by Josh Mond. I think you would love that very, movie. I know this movie. Oh, you do? Yeah. With this great actor. Christopher Abbott. I love him. Fantastic. That's a good pick. Thank you. What about Wait. you? I let This year, I would say The Big Sick and The Phantom Thread, Dunkirk, uh, Logan. Yeah? Yeah, Logan was great. Great films. Yeah. And everything that uh, uh, comes from um, the director of... Oh my God, I have a blank. That's bad. <laughs> I love the, di the director of Certain Women, which I don't remember right now. Fantastic. Kelly Reichardt. Oh, Everything oh, oh. that oh, Kelly yeah. Reichardt does, it's quite fantastic. Did she have a movie come out this year? Certain Women. Oh, that came out this year. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, when is Suspiria coming out? October. Is that new news or no? Well, we knew that we were going to go out uh, in the second part of this year. Oh, okay. All right. Timote, did you read Call Me By Your Name, the book Robin Moore is asking you? Of course, I read it uh, when I first met with Luca when I was 17. There was no script, so I had to read the book. And it wasn't available at the college I was at, so I got it via share program at another college. And then I didn't give it back for a year, and I had a fine of $100. So before this movie gave me a career, it, it took money from me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Juan Munchi is saying love from Mexico. I'm in love with you. I guess with you. With you, Luca? No, you I think with you. The, this movie doesn't... Juan, you can ask, you can tell us, is it me or him? Let's see what he says. Oh, Zoe Michel of the Oreo, cookie or cream? Depends on the day. Sometimes just cream, sometimes half the cookie and the cream, sometimes a whole bite. Do you like the Oreo ice cream? I do. It can be sugar saturation overload. All right. All right. Thank you so much for this Facebook Live. <laughs> Thanks for having us. One last question from Ira Christine Va Wales. What's your favorite outfit in the film? Ooh, that, um, I like that question. Um, I like the blue striped shirt, the blue and white striped shirt mm. from uh, the day where you were the excursion with the boat and seeing the statue emerge from the water. Almost all of my clothes in the film are producer Marco Morabitos, who's not in the room right now. Did he leave? I think he's somewhere out making fun. But calls. almost everything I wear in the movie is his, so... Yeah, because the wife of Marco is our costume designer. It's all in the family. she knows how to make someone dashing. Yeah, Thank and, you, and guys. especially with a body like... Yeah, with a skinny body like you, because Marco is as skinny as he. Nice. <laughs> Good, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wonderful. It's me. That's what...